Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Renee Allen and Friends Show here on WLVS, the largest online radio broadcast in the United States. Listen, just now my bell broke, so you're not going to hear the ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Well, you know, Murphy's Law. Welcome once again. Thank you so much. You know, I was just coming from the Hill, and I was telling the guests, which I'm so excited about today, that I, I understand why people take Uber, Lyft, have jets. You know, you need time in the car to get ready to do all this, et cetera. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, thank you for hanging in there. If you were waiting for us to come on, I want to start off by saying happy anniversary to my dear friends, Bishop Wright, and Lady Nakia Wright, who has a show every Thursday at 8 o'clock, uh, right here on WLVS. And it's also what I love about this couple at the gathering is that six years ago, he proposed to her on his birthday and called her his gift. Come on, I need my bell to work right now. <laughs> I love it. And then she responded by, I am your gift. So she doesn't buy him anything. She probably buys him things for 364 days out of the year. But that one day, that's his gift. I love it, and I love the two of you. Um, also, Nevetica, Your Pet's Choice, is a sponsor for today's show. It's uh, revolutionary and innovative products and services for your furry loved ones. You know, the four-legged daughters and sons that we have um, that we adore so much. So it gives them an opportunity to live a healthier and happier life. So thank you, Nevetica, Your Pet's Choice. Um, I want to give a big kudos to a former sponsor, Gina Duncan. Uh, do we have her flyer? Yes! And what I love about Gina is she covers everything, including farm, livestock, um, and, and she's a sister. So I love supporting other sisters. And um, so Gina Duncan, uh, just support her. She's amazing. She really went for me. You know, when you have an accident, whether it's your fault or not, it's sometimes hard to get insurance, and they try to take advantage of you like every other thing. And so uh, she fought hard and got me a great deal. And so I'm telling you, she's worth every penny. Uh, so Gina Duncan Life Insurance. Also, um, let's talk about some of the events, uh, DJ Child. Um, I will start off with Susan Smallwood. You know Miss Grandiosity herself. And she is having, it's a private affair, um, but she's launching, you know Jamie Foster Brown. Come on, y'all. Ding, ding, ding. She is the girl, Sister to Sister magazine. Well, they are relaunching tomorrow night for her Sister to Sister 2.0. I cannot wait. I love, love, love her. And of course, uh, Susan Small with Miss Grandiosity is sponsoring the event, Grandiosity Events, and it's going to be, it is closed. I just wanted to give her kudos because I love them both so much. Um, but if you show up and you don't, not on the list, you may not be able to get in. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't try that because Susan has a big, a big boyfriend. <laughs> Also, we have Tashika Green, the virtuous woman, I believe, the woman of virtue. You know, I have virtuous women on my mind because, oh, who, oh goodness, they're going to kill me. Who, oh my, loose ends. No, rough ends. Come on now, I'm just human, okay? But rough ends came out recently with a song, Virtuous Woman. My goodness, and it's, it's amazing. And so um, Tashika Green, her mother passed away and she wanted to honor her. And so she has Women of Virtue. It's her fourth year, I believe. And a, a host of a plethora of wonderful, amazing women. And um, so I was there for her inaugural one four years ago. I won't be there this year. I promise I'll be there next year because I'll be at the um, Dr. Jazz Finally Me For Real. So, uh, which brings me, is that the next one? No, Chase Your Dream, Helena. Uh, she has an evening of cultures every year. This is her fourth year as well, isn't that ironic? And she is at the Silver Spring Civic Center, and she just brings different cultures together, dress, fashion, art, music. It's so phenomenal, and I'll be hosting that, um, which is coming up next Saturday or Friday. I think it's next Friday. Do you have that one? Um, well, you can put that up, yes, finally, me. That's okay, finally, me for real. Uh, is Dr. Jazz, she is known as the male T.D. Jakes. Come on now, yes, she is something, I'm only like five foot two. <laughs> but she is having a Finally Me For Real inaugural conference, MC Light, Marcia Dyson, uh, Lynn Richardson, uh, uh, just, uh, just the women are on point. And uh, I will be, I'm honored to uh, moderate the women's panel 
Um, I'm so excited. Oh, we have the Women of Wealth uh, magazine CEO, Dr. Lee Lewis. It's just going to be phenomenal. I love being around positive women and I'm um, just edifying each other and supporting each other. Now, it sounds easy, y'all. It's not. I had to grow into that. Um, I'm the oldest of three girls, so I kind of, you know, had to do that when I was younger and it parlayed into my adulthood. And I really do enjoy, um, you know, just motivating, inspiring, educating, empowering, and definitely edifying other women. So thank you, Dr. Jazz. All right, was that it? No, we have <laughs> some more stuff. American Veterans Ball. Oh, why do I want to have my bell today? You know, y'all need to get me some bells, WLVS, sit up in the closet somewhere. But this is amazing to me. And one of our guests, um, I believe it was uh, a former Lieutenant Colonel or Colonel, you'll meet him soon, uh, Dr. Jackson. But the reason why I love this, I, you know, I haven't put my, you know, fingers into anything with the veterans um, like wholeheartedly um, because I really have to respect the leadership. And I have been involved with some other organizations, and one of which I do love, AMVETS. Um, but American Veterans Ball has really turned me on because they celebrate all veterans. Whether you were in 90 days, you were in 30 years, whether you're retired, separated, as uh, long as it was honorable. <laughs> And we really can't check that, so you're on your honor system. Um, but it's just a wonderful organization with Ozzy Ramos, uh, Sam, I forget all the names. Lord, I was getting in trouble. But um, the American Veterans Ball is the real deal. They will be having their celebration, a true celebration for veterans, on November 8th at the MG. M. We went for a tasting. The food melted in my mouth. The cheesecake it melted. In, I, it was just phenomenal. And it's going to be a, a, a really a nice lineup of amazing people who will celebrate the veterans. So I hope you can make it. I know they're, they're 400 in deep. Um, Comcast is covering it and some other people. But it's going to be really worth your while. So the tickets are, I believe, 125, maybe 150 by now. Um, but it will be worth every penny, and I suggest every veteran to come out, especially if you haven't felt celebrated in this world, coming back from war, et cetera, which to me is a crying shame. You come celebrate yourself with the American Veterans Ball. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I think last, last but not least, I'm on the board for Felicia's Fund, one of my best friends, Vivian Avakova. She's a couture designer. She um, has her and Anya by Vivian every year in the spring. Well, she has now had an inaugural ball is going to be in, in Sterling, Virginia, to my, uh, if I, my memory serves right, it says venue to be determined, but I believe it's going to be there. And um, the vice president is Karen Huger. Um, our ambassador is Candace Dillard. Um, and, and they, of course, everybody knows them, so they're on the flyer. Um, but there's so many awesome women um, putting this together. And Vivian Avakova is a selfless beautiful inside and out woman who wants to help women and children. And she doesn't just talk about it. There's a lot of people out here talking about it. She talks and she walks and she makes it happen. She just returned from Nigeria. She had backpacks. She's having sewing machines um, shipped over there um, by freight to make sure that the girls learn how to sew. It's just, I'm just so happy to be um, a, a part of her life. And, and, and I just want to do whatever I can to bring attention to Felicia's Fund, which is again in honor of her mother who passed away about two years ago. So yeah, so save the date, December 6th is going to be like, oh, and Bravo TV is going to be taping it. So if that helps you, some of your sponsors out there. <laughs> so anyway, I can't do my bell, I wanna do it so bad. But listen, we take a short break. Well, we don't have to take a break, DJ Charles, because Trina was not able to come in, because Trina is knocking on doors. She is running for councilman of Ward 1 in Maryland, and she, um, so y'all make very, very few exceptions for telephone, because I like to meet my people. I like for us to, um, the viewers, to see you. But Trina, are you there? Trina? Well, she might be knocking on another door. Let me see. Um, but you could put her picture up if you don't mind. And let me see if I can get her. Trina? OK, just hold on one minute. You know, this is live, so we just do everything. Yes, here we go. All right, come on now. The bell broke. The phone don't want to act right. Oh, the devil is a liar. Yes, he is. He doesn't stop me. There she is, that beautiful woman over there, Trina Brown. Are you on the phone? 
Oh, she's on the voicemail. Well, look, we'll try her one more time, okay, because it is important to hear what she wants to do for Prince George's County, and um, I want to give her an extra chance, okay? Hello. Trina Brown, Trina Brown, Trina yes. Brown. How Hello, are you? Hello, Renee. How are you? You're I'm, a good guest. Hello I'm, to everyone. Hello. Listen, I, I know you couldn't come in. You're knocking on doors literally right as we speak. But could you <laughs> you can leave her picture up in the corner or the whole screen. It doesn't matter to me. But Trina, we want you to talk with my viewers and people who will see this video footage and beyond and tell them why you want, why you are running for council um, woman for the Ward 1 and a little bit about yourself. All right. Well, thank you for this opportunity. I am uh, running for Ward 1 council member uh, because I believe in community. I believe in helping people. And I have a passion. I always tell people that when I was growing up, my parents didn't hold a seat in office, but they held a seat in the community. So that's mm -hmm. all I know. I know community, community, community. Yes. Helping people, you know, wanting to affect uh, 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 changes in people's lives and, and just to, 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 be, to, to help out. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Well, tell us a little bit about your background, because I don't want people to think you just thought about this yesterday. You have already poured mm -hmm. into our community. Yes, I tell am us a former council member. Yes, former council member of the town of Ladysburg. Um, as a matter of fact, I worked really hard with the, with the mayor and council during the 2011 and 2015 time, because we are a municipality, to change our trash contract back from, from, one, from one day a week to two days a week and saving our taxpayers up to $100,000 annually. Yes, okay. ma'am. Yes, yeah. ma'am. Yeah. So you know, boots on the ground, uh, getting, um, getting, getting the job done. Also, I am the uh, first vice president of the Prince George's County Young Men's uh, Young Men's Democratic Club. Awesome. So that's, mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. So, um, how do we get a hold of you? Um, you know, just tell us anything you need before October seventh. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, one thing I just, I want my viewers and my people to know that I promise to be visible, to communicate, to be accessible, and to follow up. Yes. I can be reached, yes, I can be reached at brownworks4, the number four, at gmail.com. That's brownworks4 at gmail.com. And I really do thank you so much for this opportunity. You know, you're doing a great job. Continue to keep up the good work. And um, you know, I want to talk, you know, just, and we have a couple, one thing I do want to tell people about my priorities. I'm looking yes. at public safety, the environment, our senior citizens, and education. So with that, like I said, I can be reached at brownworks4 at gmail.com. And thank you so very much for your time and keep up the good work in that. Trina Brown, look, you're among some of the greatest people that I love in Prince George's County. Delegate Daryl uh, Barnes, um, Delegate... Um, Diana Fennell, I mean, the whole plethora of them, yeah, you know, working yeah, together, yeah. our county executive, Miss um, Alsobrook, I mean, oh, our state's attorney, yeah. um, you know, yeah. uh, just, just Aisha Brayboy, just so many wonderful people, you know, collaborating to make sure this county um, stays rich, stays gorgeous, and um, moves forward. So thank you so much, and we wish you the best okay. on October 7th. And I want 7th. to plug this October the 7th from yes. 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. of Bladensburg Town Hall, for a council member ward montana of bladensburg yes girl you know what you some good luck girl good luck for us right. the show thank and the so county because the bell started working <laughs> <laughs> thank you I'm thank you for working. calling I'm still, I'm still working so all so right so good luck much. to okay. you love you bye all right goodbye to you all right. I love her. I love her spirit. I can go on and on and on. Um, but let's take a short break and we will return with one of my favorites in gospel tracy gales up just a doubt tone was it you could it be i'm just imagining how it used to be i was wrong wanna be alone i guess i never really got it but now i know it's not about me always getting my way it's not about always looking for a change i figured it out the second i walked away Ride, got 
trying to clear my mind Where are you? Could you be feeling the same as me? Do you think of me? It's not about me needing any more space It's not about everything will be okay I figured it out But then it was too late show right here on WLVS Radio, the largest online radio broadcast in the United States. I'm so excited. We go way back. I'm super, super excited. I had Tracy Gales here in the studio. Come hey. on now. <laughs> How you doing, Renee? I'm great, girl. And I'm have, so excited to be here. I'm super excited. You look beautiful. Thank you. Are we both blinging? Come on. I'm walking by faith. What you doing <laughs> over there? <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. Gospel access. Gospel access. Give me five, girl. That's what I'm talking about. I can't wait. Look, I have to give kudos to Ebony McMillan, who... McMorris. Um, McMorris. Mm-hmm. I always say McMillan. I she know. always And she never corrects me. <laughs> <laughs> She's so humble. Ellen, um, Ebony McMorris, who's getting ready to get married. I'm so yes, excited for her. Yes, she is. Yeah. So let's talk about you. Okay. Um, I know you're doing the gospel access, but yes. how did everything start? The vision? You know what, motivation? Renee? I have always had a passion to hear other people's testimony and stories. When I was little, other folks would be reading other books. I was the one reading the book on how Red Croc got started. Wow. He came up with McDonald's. I was one in the corner <laughs> reading the biography of <laughs> Sam Walton. Just weird kid. But yeah. it's interesting. I've always wanted to know how people made it, their testimonies. That's amazing. That says you have a good heart and you're about edifying and well, not as selfish. You're selfless. God is good. God yes, is God good. is good. So, you know, I, I did read up on you, although I've known you a long time. Yes. I know you left a, a real nice, juicy corporate job to, you know, start all of Took this. Took some steps of faith. I used yes. to work for Amtrak yeah. and Gospel Access started out really as a hobby, Renee. Mm-hmm. I was just showing up at red carpets, me and a cameraman <laughs> by the name of Tim Howard. Tim, if you're listening. <laughs> And we would just kind of like bum rush the red carpet and just stick a microphone in different celebrities' face. I was just hungry, just wanted to know, how has God blessed you? Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. So that's yeah. how it started. And then wow. it started to get more and more serious mm-hmm. as far as the caliber of the people that I was interviewing. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Because I went to Gospel Access and I saw a whole list of people, one of which Willie Jolly I know very well. Yeah, but yeah. a whole list. Talk about some of the people that are maybe some of your oh my favorite, goodness. you know, that's I the think, <laughs> and I've, I've interviewed them all pretty yeah. much. God has really blessed me in the, in the gospel world. Fred Hammond, Ooh, Shirley Caesar. Come on now. Oh, my gosh. And then uh, on TV, I've interviewed Anthony Anderson, Star of Blackish. Oh, fine. Wow. Omari Hardwick, oh. who plays Ghost on Power. Yes. <laughs> but I think my favorite probably is between Vivica Fox. That's and Anthony Anderson, because oh. uh, Anthony just, I know he cuts up a lot, but yeah. he really always consistently drops nuggets of wisdom as far as staying ready and staying yeah. prepared. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. it's, it's awesome. And him and Tracy Ross are really doing the dog. Yeah, they, thing, are. Aren't they? they are. They are. They really are. They really are. 
So let's talk about, so I'm trying to get a lot in to this interview okay. because it's, you know, you're so busy, you know? So, no busier than you, uh, Renee. Uh oh, now, well, come on, girl, <laughs> I'll receive it, but I know you're busier than me, okay? <laughs> but look, you know, I'm a single mom, okay. and I heard that you are, yeah. right? Yeah. So let's talk to the people who really want to hear, how do you balance it all? I mean, you're doing magnificent things Thank you. Um, locally, internationally, internationally, celebrity, um, the station, yeah. you know, the household. How do you yeah. do it? And really, give us some nuggets, girl. Well, you've got to really prioritize. Mm. You know, you got to have some type of a routine, some type of habit. You can't just jump out of bed and just go willy-nilly. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. you got to pray or, or read your Oof. word. That's what I do to stay balanced yeah. as far as, because during the day, all kinds of things hit you. That's true. You know, that's and true. prioritize. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a big nugget, y'all. Mm -hmm. yeah. This sounds easy, but that can be, you know, yeah. mind-boggling. Yeah. You know, yeah. if you have a lot going on like yourself. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So let's hear about maybe a few women and maybe men who have really been integral part of your life and the trajectory of what's going okay. on with you now. I would say Dr. Barbara Reynolds. Mm -hmm. She is a, a political journalist. She yes. gave me my first shot as far as interviewing people on the red carpet. And my mom, my mother has always been an, a great influence, always supportive. Mm -hmm. And my son, believe it or not, my son is yes. 25. He lives in Dubai, but he's oh, always like, Mom, you can now, do it. Mom, Dubai. you can do it. Yeah. yeah Give him a so. shout out, girl. Hey, Give Julian. him a shout out. <laughs> he's probably asleep. It's like eight hours ahead. So, but I, Let me see how to chase, too, in case he's watching my son. <laughs> you know how to <they> get. <laughs> so... Thank God for moms. Yeah, you know, definitely. First of all. definitely. But Barbara Reynolds, she was on the show before. She had a book. Yeah, Barbara Reynolds yes. is, uh, <clears throat> she was actually Credit Scott King's mentee. Yes. So yeah. she's a wise woman. Yeah. And to have an autobiography, <clears throat> uh, authorized exactly. one, says a lot exactly. about the person. Yeah. Exactly. Isn't that something how it's all mm -hmm. full circle with the same people? Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm amazed. So tell us one, maybe one triumph that you had that really stays close to heart triumph a triumph i think probably starting gospel access mm. you know because it takes a lot it's one thing to have a dream and a desire but it's a whole different ball game to bring that thing out of your mind out of your spirit out of your heart and into the world wow. you know and yeah. i think that's what god wants us to do he wants us to take what he has given us mm. off the shelf of our mind and planted in the soil of our lives come on tracy yes come on now speaking of god because I don't play on this show. I talk about <laughs> God all the time. How has that been? I mean, it's always a great thing. But, you know, we're talking about people out in the world. Mm -hmm. How has it played a great part? And how has it played a challenging part in your career? Oh, my goodness. Just <laughs> walking by faith, you know. Because mm. you'll see God will give you a vision. And, and, of course, it's always bigger than what you can do on your own. Yeah. That's why we need God. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, that, Preach that's, that's and the, teach. You know, that's the challenge <laughs> is walking by faith and just having a belief that what he's given you, you're equipped. Mm -hmm. Whatever God has given each mm -hmm. of us, mm -hmm. you are equipped to do whatever it is God has called you to do. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are, we're starting a boss up. It's called boss yes. up series on I Monday. Love it. I love it. Boss up, boss up your life. Mm -hmm. And we have found awesome. that a lot of people are praying for things that God has already blessed them with. Mm. A lot of people are praying for prosperity and God has blessed you. He's answered your prayer by yes. giving you a thought for a business. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's like a man who prays and prays and prays for a tree mm -hmm. and God blesses him with a seed. Mm. And it's on that man to take that seed and plant it and water it and cultivate it. Ooh. And then God turns the seed into the tree that the man had been wanting all along. You like a living angel sitting Ooh. over here because I'm getting chills. <laughs> But we're starting are, a Boss Up series, yes. and it's starting every Monday and uh, on Facebook, and we're going to be just talking to people, just boss up. It's time for everybody to boss up. It's time. Whatever it is you said you were going to get accomplished in 2019, if you have not done it yet, mm -hmm. it's time to boss up and do it. Mm -hmm. what, do, what do you give credit to besides the women and the men? Mm -hmm. What else do you give credit to that keeps you going when you have a not-so-bossed-up day? Hmm... 
I'd say faith, just, mm. just faith. I mean, not every day is going to be a mountaintop experience. Yeah, wow. That's part of life. You know, you've got the ups and downs. The high, it's like a roller coaster, yeah. you know? Yeah. So not every day is going to be a mountaintop. Day. I love what's coming out your mouth today. <laughs> okay. And look what I wore. Just let me move this out the way. Just for her when today. Walking by faith. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Look at I us. wore that for you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank and for you. you. Thank you. They're thank you. jealous now. You, you got to make sure you mm-hmm. include the, the viewers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, well, tell us something we don't know about Tracy Gales. I'm a big, fat Denzel Washington fan, <laughs> as probably all women probably are. Yeah, and uh, I think I can cite word for word Training Day in American Gangster. Yeah, oh, my <laughs> God. And today, just today, my son was, because I have a friend, Silver, Sylvia Tremor Morrison, and my son said, I want to talk to Sylvia about uh, my, my impressions, and she did. And my son did Denzel Washington. Oh so it's funny goodness. you said that. See, yeah, that's this is good. the kind of stuff that gets me that's excited, good. turns me on when things mm-hmm. like that align, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yes. So what else can we expect on Monday? Can you tell us who's going to be on? Or what can you, we what can you spill? Have, okay, we're going to have <laughs> co-pastor Susie Owens as the first guest okay. for the Boss Up series. And we sit down and we're giving, she's giving some intimate, really great wisdom nuggets. Mm-hmm. And I had a chance to talk to Dietrich Haddon, Joe yes. Claire. Woo. Oh, that's there. my boy there. And we're going to uh, finish up with Jamal Bryant. Yeah, woo. Yeah, Jamal Bryant for the Boss Up series. Yes. You finishing up with the right one. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, it's, time for, it's time for everybody to do. We, we don't know how many days we have left, you know. Yeah. And regret is, you, you don't want to get to later on in life mm-hmm. and regret and look back and say, why didn't I try that, yeah. you know. Yeah. Well, it looks like you are taking every seed that God gives you and planting it, and it's growing. Mm -hmm. You know, I wish you the best. Thank you. How do they get a hold of you? Gospelaccess.org is the website, Mm -hmm. and you can look me up on Instagram, which is Gospel Access TV. Okay. Well, I want to talk about one more thing. So, we talk about God, your church. Greater Mount Calvary, Holy Church, Rhode Island Avenue. Come on down and fellowship with us. Our service starts at 10. We have prayer at 9.30, from 9.30 to 10 to set the atmosphere. To set it. Yes, and 10 a.m. on Sundays. Um, Tell me why. I mean, you could be anywhere, gospel access. Why that church? Wow, I have been going to Greater Mount Calvary since 1990. Wow. That's how long I've been there. That's when Desert Show, Desert Storm started. Yeah, and I think when when I first went to Calvary, I was a... Uh, very insecure, mm. gullible. No, uh, no. Yeah. Say it's not so. <laughs> just, just low self-esteem, everything. I, I was just imagine. a disaster. Ugh. And just being there has definitely built me up mm. in my relationship with Jesus Christ and everything. Praise so God. I'm not going to leave. I'm not, what is it? If it ain't broke, don't fix don't it. Don't fix it. So I'm not leaving the church. <laughs> I'm leaving the church now. <laughs> you are amazing, Thank Tracy you. Gales. I am so honored to have you here today. You're welcome anytime. Um, after you do your boss up series, we can come on back, talk about it, share it with the viewers. Okay. Anything you want to leave us with? Last words? Last words I want to say is to everyone, just figure out what God has blessed you to do and do it. There's mm. a saying that I love. It says you can count the number of seeds in an apple, but you'll never be able to take one of those seeds and figure out how many apples are going to come from Ooh. it. You can take that apple that's on your kitchen counter, slice it open, and count the number of seeds in the apple, but you'll never be able to take up one of those seeds and figure out how many apples will come from the seed. Wow. You know what I'm saying? If that didn't blow your mind right there, I don't know what will. (laughs) So, you know, you don't know what God will do. You got got to put your hand to the plow and... Boss up. There it is. Come on now. (laughs) Thank you so much. Listen, I wish I could keep her longer. We have one more guest, and um, I'm gonna be trying to boss up more. So you know, uh, so Tracy <laughs> Gales, so she she'll be proud of me. <laughs> and so um, thanks, thanks for again. having me, Renee. You're welcome. Appreciate it's been it. a, such a such a joy. Thank it you. really has. And if you've never sat next to her, I really feel that I feel chills now. She is the bomb.com. You are so genuine, transparent, beautiful, and vibrant. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Okay, support her. Go to her Facebook. So, um, what, when, Gospel when is access. It? Yeah, and when is it? Boss Sun- Monday? Up series starts Monday. At what time? Uh, 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock a.m.? Yeah. All right, y'all heard it. Support mm-hmm. her. We'll be right back with Dr. J. I think it's Johnny, but J for short, Jackson. And you don't want to miss this living icon. Thank you. Chips. White wine. Mm, to my 
mother I wanna know have I made you proud And to my father I wanna know have I ever been a problem child And to my pastor I've been trying to be in church a little more And to my lady just have patience God's still working on me now I ask for forgiveness from Progress report. I wonder, wonder what it would say to all my teachers. Thanks for taking extra time out with me. To my producer, thanks for keeping a young fella on the beat. Into the soldiers, going out there and risking your life for me. And to my lady, just have patience, cause God's still working on me now. Anybody that I forgot to mention Come and look in my long list There are some things I gotta Eventually I'll right. get to you Who says need to be oh, 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 oh. It's been a rollercoaster But I'm gonna hang I'm on I'm gonna hang I was on the other night oh, What if my life on. was being great? What did it, what would it say? But for some reason I feel there's so much room for improvement So I'ma go find those burnt bridges There are some things I gotta build get back right. up again Looses need to be I get it tight all of them Hold on But I'm gonna hang I'm gonna on hang Welcome, welcome, welcome back to Renee Allen and Friends. You know they say that at the Carolina Kitchen where you get your chicken and much, much more. <laughs> That's one of my favorite restaurants. But um, anyway, welcome back to the Renee Allen and Friends show. I'm sitting here with Dr. Johnny R. Jackson. And um, I met him on the... Uh, Chris Brown, Chris Brown. See, I'm messing up. Uh, <laughs> Chris Thomas. He gonna, everybody gonna get me. But charge my head, not my heart. The Chris Brown. Oh Lord, Chris Thomas. <laughs> Chris Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> the Chris Thomas show with Dr. Renee. He's gonna kill me tomorrow morning. It's on Radio One every morning at 11:30 a.m. 104.1 and 95.9 FM. Lord, he might throw me out the studio tomorrow. But I met this gentleman on his show last week, and I said I had to squeeze him in because I was so impressed. And I don't use that word often, but I was so impressed and so filled with pride. Because um, you know I'm a 22-year retired um, veteran of the United States Navy and Naval Reserves. I did not know. I want Dr. Jackson, I'd like you to tell them a little bit about you before we get started. Um, and of course, you could show his his military decorated. Um, oh, well, I was born in Crawford, Texas, and uh, had my first job picking cotton at age six mm, mm, mm. on William Abel's farm, which is across the street from from George Bush's home mm. uh, ranch. Uh, I worked my way through Prairie View Enemy University. Mm. I can never thank Prairie View enough for what it did for my Prairie life. Prairie View. Yeah, I hitchhiked that that sun Monday morning, and when I got, I had. $18 in my pocket, mm. didn't know where I was going to stay, I was hungry, no job. And in 30 minutes, all of those were before me. Mm -hmm. And I graduated from Prairie View and University uh, uh, in medicine That's awesome. Uh, went in as the second lieutenant and moved through the ranks very, very rapidly, uh, captain age 24, mm -hmm. a major age 29, et cetera. I'm going to be ringing and, this bell the whole interview, but go ahead. <laughs> but, but, but I've always had someone a group of people in my life mm -hmm. who I've always looked up to and admired, and they've carried me along with them. One person is uh, Joan Jujus W. Beckton, mm -hmm. who was my mentor in, in college at ROTC, mm -hmm. and he saw the fall of my career. Uh, one of the major things that I've had about seven generals, mm -hmm. and I've been put in the key positions all my military service to be able to pioneer things in healthcare, mm -hmm. The, within the combat units to be able to pioneer all the, the system runs in all of the hospitals. Mm -hmm. 
and to be blessed to be the first director mm -hmm. of Wall Street Elementary Medical Center, a 1,200 1, native bed hospital. Yes. The top 1% in all of hospitals in America. Mm -hmm. The home of the president, yes. senators, Congress, yes. and staff. Mm, did y'all hear that? <laughs> but I think one of the accomplishments that was that uh, that I would like to attribute is mm -hmm. my uh, U.S. patent. Mm -hmm. It took eight years to get a U.S. patent mm -hmm. for this device, system, mm -hmm. and method for portable medical records. Mm -hmm. And the intent was to better manage diabetes, mm -hmm. especially on an outpatient basis. Now, when did you receive that patent? March the 8th, 2016. 2016. Well, congratulations. Thanks. My mom is, um, is trying to overcome diabetes, so I, I'm, I'm close to it. So what does the device do? Well, you can put your entire medical records on this device. Wow. And wow. it's totally secure and encrypted. It has a 250-bit uh, storage mm -hmm. capacity. It has a layered epoxy so that you, the data cannot be erased. Wow. In the data. That's amazing. But the important thing is that this device is compatible mm -hmm. with almost any system. Mm -hmm. The major problem we have in healthcare and information system technology is that the software is just not compatible. Mm -hmm. Every, uh, most organizations have their own software proprietary, mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's, there's no transferability, no yeah. interoperability. Almost like religion. And the major problem, <laughs> and diabetes uh, is devastating. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got diabetes, and mm -hmm. I was credited, contacted as a result of Agent Orange in Vietnam. Oh, my, my, uh, my, my. After, after, after 12 months. Mm. So I've researched diabetes mm -hmm. management systems for the last uh, 35, 45 years. Okay. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about, you talk about health care, and of course we know there's always been something with the presidents, you know, the health care. We're like, why can't they pass something, you know, worthwhile for the people? Now, I believe Obamacare was the, probably the first, or first but tell, tell, you're the expert. Talk about health care and what the problem is and what really is going on with that. Well, uh, initially, about in the early 1930s, mm -hmm. uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt, a Democratic president, mm -hmm. tried to put in the first uh, universal health care system, but he was blocked by the Republicans and part of the AMA. And there, another b major breakthrough, mm -hmm. he was blocked. Mm -hmm. but, in, but in 1964, President Lyndon Johnson managed to pass the Medicare and Medicaid Act. Yes. Major breakthrough. And yes, then yes. President Clinton came in with the Children's Health and so forth. Yes, so. yes. Come on. But the major breakthrough in history is the Affordable Health Care Act under President Ooh. Obama. And, and uh, they are still, as we speak, they're still trying to overthrow mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. But what makes Obama's act so great mm -hmm. is pre-existing conditions. Yes, sir. Because that is a major problem. And I don't like to talk about this very much, mm -hmm. but when we look at pre-existing conditions, mm -hmm. it really started in World War II on Adolf Hitler where uh, they had captured more than six million Jews. And the question is, what do you do with them? What is the Jewish solution? Mm -hmm. So they devised a solution whereby they would bring them into about four different camps, mm -hmm. bring them in one line, and they would screen them. Mm -hmm. Notice, good pre-existing conditions okay. was one criteria. Mm -hmm. Those were the Jews who could work. They were strong. Mm -hmm. uh, they could bear children work in the, and work. Mm -hmm. And they sent those directly to the concentration camps. Wow. Now, those mm -hmm. were good ones, good existence. Yeah. And most of those were skin and bones at the end of World War II. My God. Now, the bad pre existing conditions, mm -hmm. okay, those were people who were seniors, uh, couldn't have babies, mm -hmm. women who were too old, children, infants. They went straight to the death camp wow. and, and were slaughtered. Jesus. So in America, we have very much the same type system of s selecting people. Mm -hmm by prison conditions. Mm -hmm. uh, Vong put a report that had 270 conditions, things such as acne, you know, ingrown toenail could be denied. But if you look at the media. Could be denied? Yes, yes. Wow. I've got those written in, in, in my book. Uh, but if you look at the media, they want you to believe that it's chronic diseases, mm -hmm. cancer, so forth, but it's not. Wow. It's simple things that, uh, that even, even if a woman has been abused, mm -hmm. she, can, she can be denied. Wow. Even a pregnant woman, a baby too fat, too skinny can be denied health care. So these are things on purpose. Yes, intentionally. Yeah. And the health insurance company is some of the wealthiest companies mm -hmm. in America, mm -hmm. only behind tobacco companies. Mm -hmm. And that is one of my pet peeves, uh, how tobacco can survive. Mm -hmm. If we look at Thomas Kuhn, who, uh, who uh, wrote uh, a book about the paradigm shift, mm -hmm. 
he talks about two different paradigm shifts. Mm -hmm. The one paradigm shift is to change the science and technology. And a good, good example of that is the microscope. Yeah. And now we have the electron microscope. Uh, we have arthroscopic surgery. Mm -hmm. we, have pharma we have drugs and medication to help heal you, you know, in our surgery. Mm -hmm. Those things are great, but they are all for naught if only 10% mm -hmm. of the American population can have those. Yeah. But the worst problem we have in America is his other definition mm -hmm. of the paradigm shift. That is our belief system, mm -hmm. what we believe in. And a good example of that, we believe in tobacco. Mm -hmm. But tobacco is the deadliest preventable disease wow. in America. Come on now. Uh, tobacco killed more m people, more Americans, in two years than all the wars we've fought in history. Really? Yes, going back to the Civil War, World War I, World War II, Korean, all those. Dr. Jackson, you are educating all of us. Right. Uh, just what people don't talk about also is Secondhand smoke. Mm -hmm. Secondhand smoke kills over 50,000 children That's a year. That's what I smoke, because I don't smoke, so yes. I'm always smelling the yes. smoke. Yeah. So it, but the sad part about it is that the Justice Department, mm -hmm. the U.S. Uh, District Court, found the tobacco companies guilty of the RICO Act, and we know that that was, act that was able to put the big bosses right. charged for crimes. Mm -hmm. And they were found guilty. Mm -hmm. And of engineering tobacco, Right. Putting drugs and so forth, mm -hmm. and killing people mm -hmm. maliciously. That's the and bottom willfully. line: killing yes, people. Killing people. Yeah. Get them hooked. And to I become would, rich. Yeah, oh yes, I was yeah. at all for money. Yeah, all for money. Mm -hmm. I was in Texas about two weeks ago, mm -hmm. and I saw this commercial about smoking tobacco. Mm -hmm. They made it look real dreamy, a person in mm -hmm. heaven. Pretty was, women is smoking. I said, how can they let that exist? Mm -hmm. And now you see what happened. Yeah. About seven states have now outlawed it mm -hmm. because it's killing people left and right. Yeah. And it's addictive, um, yes. because my sister has tried to quit for decades, back and forth, but it's very addictive. You know, she's a strong-willed person, my sister Lisa. So it's very, very dangerous. Yeah, another mm. major problem is the big pharma. Mm. The pharmaceutical companies kill about 106,000 people a year wrong mm. medications. Oh my goodness. Uh, it's totally unreal that these kind of things exist. Yeah. And if you look at the Fortune 500 companies, mm. they're in the top 20 and top 30 mm -hmm. of profit already. Yeah. Just, just killing people. Yeah, they're preying on our children because of the commercials. I want to talk about that book you have right there before we run out of time. Oh, President Obama's book? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's his book. Oh. No, 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 you're, okay, you're, this yeah, let's talk about that. This Can is, we, we get a close-up on that, please, do you say, child? He'll, he'll show This is the first book that I wrote about President Obama mm -hmm. and the Affordable Health Care Act. Mm -hmm. I was so impressed with just meeting him. Uh, let me tell you a little story. Yeah. I was at Andrews Air Force Base. I'm a very avid golfer. And he had just been uh, inaugurated about six days in his wow. second inauguration. And uh, he saw my hat about 30 feet away. Mm -hmm. And he saw me. He, said, he says, he begged for me. Really? I said, the president won't, won't talk to me. <laughs> so I, I went over, and he says, I like that cap you're wearing. I said, me too, Mr. President. I've been wearing it for the last six months. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what was the cap? The, the, the cap on the picture that I sent you uh -huh. where he signed it. He oh, said, I couldn't get that picture to the uh, format. He said, yeah. may I sign it? I said, yes, sir. Wow. So he turned his left hand around backward mm -hmm. and signed it, and I put it on my head. I've got that cap frame. But more mm -hmm. importantly, mm -hmm. I had no idea uh, that someone of that level would come back and, and correspond with me. Mm -hmm. But I was doing this book. I was doing a book signing mm -hmm. at, at Boulder Air Force Base, and a guy came in. He says, uh, has President Obama seen your book? Mm -hmm. I said, I sent him one, but he probably hasn't. Mm -hmm. He said, well, I'm his helicopter pilot, wow. and I'm on my way to, to mm -hmm. fly he, to mm. Valerie Jarrett uh, to Camp uh, to, uh, Davis. And I said, I gave him the book. Didn't think much about it. So mm -hmm. he called me that night home. He says, I gave you a book to the president. Yes. And he smiled and said he'd be getting in touch with you. Well, he'd get in touch with me. I, <laughs> I so, so anyway, uh, about six weeks later, mm -hmm. I get this book in the mail. He had signed my book mm -hmm. and sent it back to me. Come on now. He had gone up on the internet and found out a picture some kind of way. Mm, mm, mm. Blew that picture up, big Lord, and signed and sent it back to me. Wow. And sent me a letter of appreciation. One of my pleasures. You are an extraordinary. When I called him a living legend, y'all thought I was joking. It, for those of you who knew I wasn't joking, glory, hallelujah. Because lightning usually doesn't strike at the same place twice. Right. And you had the president twice. Right. That's nothing but divine power. Right. You know? So let's talk about. I want your next book. You have another book. 
Um, or, or what would you like to talk about? Well, yes, uh, very briefly, this book is a paradigm shift in mm -hmm. healthcare. Mm -hmm. And I used about 50 years of experience mm -hmm. to put my experience in healthcare and to show just how horrific mm -hmm. the healthcare system really is in America, mm -hmm. and you're not gonna change it. Mm -hmm. Big businesses are too big. You have the pharmaceutical companies that dominate mm -hmm. and killing people. You have the tobacco companies that's been a it's been supported mm -hmm. by the Justice Department, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. wow. commerce, because there's so much money involved. Uh, we didn't. We are. There are 33 industrialized nations, and we are the only one that does not have a universal healthcare system. Mm -hmm. And it's unlikely that we'll get one. Mm -hmm. Okay. And even if we do get one, it's not going to be implemented. Mm -hmm. There'll be some kind of way. And uh, part of my book, I talk about mm -hmm. uh, this one. No, in my new book, oh, oh. A Paradigm Shift in Healthcare. Mm -hmm. uh, I talk about... Can I see that? Yes. Uh, I talk about, I talk mm -hmm. about women uh, in there. Mm -hmm. And women, even, even though they're about 51% of the total population, they are still second-class citizens. Mm -hmm. uh, the irony of this is that, for example, mm -hmm. uh, Roe v. Wade has been overturned in about 22 states. Atlanta's one, right? Yeah. Or, oh, no. Oh. The top of Alabama mm. and Georgia, and those are the highest infant mortality rates, mortality rates in those wow. two countries. And right now, even out, as I speak, uh, President Trump is, tr is, is trying to overturn uh, the the uh, Obama Act mm -hmm. that has to, that has to do with prisons and conditions mm -hmm. as we speak. Yeah. Okay. It's and so I was inspired. Change. I was inspired by this cover, yeah. uh, uh, where you see it's, mm -hmm. it, it has the. Uh, Statue of Liberty, yes. and it had buzzards circling around it. Yeah. Because let's, that's show, let's show them again. Yeah. Here, if you don't mind. So you has, can talk about it. Yeah, it yeah. has the buzzards circling. Because we have about one minute left. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, and the reason for that is the Statue of Liberty represents America, mm -hmm. and so does the flag. But Trump has taken away this, bring me your burdens, it's mm -hmm. gone. Yeah. We actually have consecration, consecration camps throughout the borders right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I'm I, I saw him get that. choked up. Yeah. I talk about that. So I know. Uh, I know. He's not making America great again. He's making America hate again. Right. And I'm, I just pray to God he doesn't get back in that White House. Wow. It's, it's just destroying America. Me too. And I'm not usually in politics, but when you're it's destroying America and you're a madman right. at the officer in chief, give me a break. Right. But I think the, America needed to see this, needed to see the hate that he has brought forth, right. and they needed to see um, the, the ridiculous clown that he is yes. uh, before we can get him out of there. Uh, you, know? you can purchase my book, A Paradigm Shift. Yes. A, a Paradigm Shift in Healthcare dot com on, off the internet. Yeah. Well, listen, Dr. Jackson, I uh, thank you. And, and when did you meet that lovely wife that came into the studio with you? Miss <laughs> Francine, because she uh, is a glowing, beautiful thing over there. I was on a ski trip, uh -huh. and I met her then. But the real story behind this is that I was a major in the in the, in the army, and I sat on the board of her brother, not knowing this at the time. Uh -huh. uh, real handsome guy who who's a Rhodes Scholar, uh -huh. and uh, tragic accident. Uh, he was in Grafen, Germany, doing training, wow. and he had gotten out of the building, this lieutenant, and he went back in to see his buddy, and they both burned. Wow. And I had oh a house God. on his effects. I had no idea that 15 years later, mm. I would meet his sister. <laughs> <laughs> if you wouldn't mind, Francine, just come on up, stand up here, just, just for a minute, just to stand up here, so you can meet, because behind every great man, believe me, there's a great woman. To have a wife is a good thing. And I met her right here in the middle. Okay. And I just want them to meet the, um, the woman, of the wind beneath his wings. Oh, thank yeah, you. Could you do, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and just, uh, we'll, we'll just take it out by just telling us why of all the men in the world, did you say yes to this one? I don't know. For some reason, I, I feel like I was made to be with him. So, you know, it's, uh, we've been together for over 25 years. So it's been a long time. Yes. Yeah. And I guess I'll ask you, oh, thank you. And I'll, and I'll ask you, sir, why of all the flowers and all the, Frank Sinatra said, of all the plums, why did you pick this one? <laughs> well, uh, it sort of evolved. Uh, initially, when I met her on a ski trip, 
um, I told her what I like to do. I like to play golf. I like to travel. Mm -hmm. And so I meet her, bought a set of golf clubs that she never used. <laughs> <laughs> but but we do travel travel a lot. And uh, I want to plug her family. Such a great family. Oh. Uh, you, you might have heard of Dr. Melvin Stith, who's who. I have. Yeah, he's that's her brother. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, President. He was interim president of Norfolk State University oh this, until this year when they named a permanent. Oh, I, I met him with Marvel McKay. She was the former assistant secretary under Bush right. uh, for um, civil rights for USDA. Okay. Yes, that's okay. right. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you might have heard of David Stith who, uh, with Merrill Lynch. Oh, yes, yes, yes. That's, that's her wow. brother. Well, you know. And Peter Stith. Some rich, the whole great family, blood. family. <laughs> all, all 12 of them. Ten. <laughs> he gave you two extra. Yeah, yeah. Well, listen, I am so glad you came. What's, uh, how do they get a hold of you for your book, for you to come speak? Uh, on my website mm -hmm. at a paradigm shift in healthcare.com. <laughs> and you can contact me from the website. Uh, and also, my email yes. jjdrjackson01 at verizon.net. Thank and you. I'll be glad to come speak. I enjoy speaking. Thank you so much. Thank I wish I had more time for all of my thank guests today. You, Dr. Johnny R. Jackson and his bride, Francine, thank you both for coming on the thank show you. today. I wish you the best. And anything I can do, I will make sure that people understand they need to hear your voice. I would appreciate it. Thank you very God much. God bless thank you. Enjoy. See you next week. Thank Thanks you. for tuning Great. in, y'all. <laughs>